Okay, when to provide a fallback. The else clause is useful as a fallback to the main condition that you are checking. That is, if you care what happens when your primary condition is false. You should provide an else clause to take care of it. Do this. Click run to see the swarm of bees created for you and a flower on the left side of the screen. Make the swarm of bees appear when the mouse is near the flower on the left side of the screen and disappear when the mouse is away from the flower on the right side of the screen. Look at the example on the right. So if you look here, the mouse moves to the right side of the screen, the bees disappear. Left side, the bees appear. Okay, so I want you to think about this. Let's turn that off so it's not distracting us. Is the left and right side of the screen split up by the x-axis or the y-axis? It's the y-axis, okay? And look at that. That's at about, hmm, x. Actually, I think I worded that incorrectly. I think we want to split it by the x-axis, even though it's going, um, go going up and down to the left of the middle of the screen, the x value is less than 200. Yeah, that's what I, I'm sorry. And on the right side, the x value is greater than 200. So think about that. And we want to add an if else statement after you update the position of the bees. So let's look in the draw loop. Okay, so these are the positions of the bees. We want to add an if else statement. Okay. In the input of the if, use a boolean to check the x position of the mouse is on the if it's on the right side of the screen or the side of the screen with the flower. Okay, so that's x less than two hundred. Okay, x position of the mouse. So that's going to be world dot mouse x. If world dot mouse x. Oh wait, you know what? Let's use math. Uh, key here is less than. So we want less than. Yeah. Okay. If world dot mouse x is less than two hundred. Okay. Set the visible property of each b inside the both if and else appropriately to make the bees only show near the flower. So if world dot mouse x is less than 200 on the left side of the screen, the side of the screen with the flower, we want the bees to be visible. So b1, 2, and 3 dot visible equals true. So I'm going to go ahead and put 3. We also want 3 in the else portion of our if else statement. Visible. Okay, so don't forget to name each sprite. B1 visible equals true. B2 visible equals true. B3 dot visible equals true. And then down here, we want to make them all false. B1 dot visible equals false. B2 dot visible equals false. B3 dot visible equals false. And this should work. Let's see. Yep, they disappeared. Sure enough. All right. Make a prediction, user input. So far, you've used key down as a way to let users control your programs, but that's just one of many ways to take input. In fact, just one of many ways to detect key presses. Depending on how you want to react to a key press, there are a few other blocks you might want to use. Read the program and predict below what will happen when you press each of the up, down, left, and right arrows. After making your prediction, run the code and write down or share it with your neighbor your observations. Okay, so what's going to happen when we press these arrows? Uh, okay, so this is 
x, y, width, height. If I press up, what's going to happen? Hmm. Key down up. If I press up, there's going to be text uh, 400x, 100y. There's going to be text right here, I guess. Text key down. I think. Oh no, that's width and height. Hmm. I, I I don't know, but I want you to write a prediction. Yeah, I probably didn't know last time. That's why I put G F H, F H. What do you think the exclamation mark on line ten does? Oh, okay. False. False. True. False. So let's press up. Up makes the up true. Interesting. Uh, let's press right. Okay, that's interesting. When I key went down and I oh no key went up and I press right. When I release the key, it says true for a split second. So let's see what happens when I hit left. Left. When I press the key down, it makes it true for a split second. Now let's press the down arrow. Okay, and down. Down is working, ah, uh, okay. So down is working the opposite way of up. So this exclamation mark makes it so that it's set to true, but when I press down, it sets it to false. Whereas when I press up, it makes it true. Interesting. Okay, didn't want to show you the answer there. Okay, mouse clicks. Key presses are great, but sometimes you want users to interact through mouse clicks. There's a new block called mouse down, which, similar to key down, checks whether the left or right mouse buttons is being pressed. If you are using a computer with a mouse or trackpad that is only one button, you'll want to always use mouse down left. Okay. Here's a program that drops a balloon down the screen. You're going to program the mouse button to raise the balloon back up while it's clicked. So when we click it, it should raise up. Add an if else statement that checks for mouse down. Okay, there must be. Okay, this is mouse down. Okay, they want us to. If the mouse is down. Okay, they even added a comment for us. That's nice. Okay. If mouse is down. So let's find mouse down. Uh, move the balloon up. Oh, okay, so we're going to need a, something about the X value. Oh, no, the Y value. Otherwise, move it down. Okay, so is this plus one? Plus one's going to... That's what's making it move down, this statement. Okay, so let's put this in the else. And then I think we just want to do the opposite of that. If mouse down... And we're just going to do the opposite of this. So let's use our best friend, copy and paste and just change that plus sign to a negative. And now I think it should work. Yep, it worked. Okay, challenge. Can you make the balloon drift randomly to the left and right as it rises and falls? For the sake of the video, I think I'm going to let you guys figure that out on your own. I think that might take too long. You know what? I'll pause the video and figure it out. Okay, so what you're going to want to do to do the challenge is I think outside of the if statement, we are going to put set the x value of the balloon to a random number. And I think you want it to be around the middle. So let's say 180 to 220. 180 to 220. Uh, I'm not sure if this will work. Let's see. Hmm. What's going on? How come the balloon isn't appearing now? Let's take this out and see if it works. Okay, my balloon has disappeared. What did I do wrong? Hmm. 
Okay, yeah, sometimes you just need to reload the page in Game Lab. Sometimes that causes errors. So let's redo that and see if it works. Balloon math random number 180 220. Alright, let's see. Oh, wow. It's a little violent. Maybe we can make it 190 210. Why is it shaking so fast? 199, 201. Eh, whatever. At least I did it. If you want to set it so that maybe the frame rate is reduced and that moves slowly, maybe that'll work. Otherwise, you did it. Responding to a single click. Earlier, we learned that key went down and key went up can be used to respond to a key press a single time. The blocks mouse went up and mouse went down allow you to do that for the mouse. Do this. Let's make a simple game that counts how many times you've clicked. Okay, so I guess every time we click this number is going to increase. We've already provided a variable clicks, okay, it's set to zero, that you can use to track how many times the user has clicked. Add a conditional that checks if the mouse went down. Okay, conditional. That means an if statement. If mouse went down, that's in the world drawer. If mouse went down, okay, went down. Add to the clicks variable. Okay, here is where you might get confused. You might get caught up. You do not want this VAR anymore. You just want to put clicks, clicks, and then we are using the counter pattern. Clicks plus one. I'm pretty sure this is how you do it. Let's see. Yep. Great. Okay, challenge. Can you add a sprite that responds to the mouse went down as well? Add an image of your choice and increase the sprite's size each time the mouse is clicked. Yeah, we can do that. Okay. All right. Let's add an image. Let's add the bear. Let's just name it bear. Okay. If mouse went down, so we're going to we have to create the sprite. I forgot about that. And let's just keep it named sprite. And we're going to set the animation to bear. And in here, we are going to say sprite dot. Hmm, we have to say size. So let's say scale. Sprite dot scale scale equals and we got to use the counter pattern so sprite dot scale plus point one and I think this should work oh but where are we gonna draw it okay and we need draw sprites draw sprites uh, let's see hopefully it going there will work and let's not put a 200 200 because that's where the text is displaying center center okay so let's put it uh 50 50. why isn't my bear showing okay so draw sprites do i need draw sprites out here do I need draw sprites out here? Hmm. Okay, I think because they have a background drawn, so I think I want to put draw sprites after the background so that the sprite is drawn each time. Yeah, okay, that worked. Okay, yeah, and each time I click it, it gets bigger. Okay, cool. I'm going to stop the video there, and part three will have exercise 12.